box. I'm really excited about our show today. Uh, it's something that's very close to my heart, and I have a couple of really people that I feel like very close close friends with. And so, before we get into the subject of what we're going to discuss, I need to mention our underwriters and the support that they give the show to keep it going. Uh, this is Pizza's Pizza by the Slice. It includes low-fat, vegan, and gluten-free options, as well as beer, wine, and soft drinks. We thank them for keeping us fueled by supplying the crew with pizza. They're located at 1309 21st Street, and they're in Sacramento. The number is 441-1949. And also, um, James Israel, He's the editor of Humor Times. It's a monthly subscription. It's available world, worldwide, and you can get it in print or digital format. Uh, don't cry about the news. Laugh about it with Humor Times. They have cartoons, funny fake news, video, and more info can be found at humortimes.com. I also wanted to mention that we have a Facebook page. It's Soapbox Sacramento, and you can find us on YouTube at Soapbox Sacramento. So I want to welcome uh, some people that feel very close to and they're very happy they're back from Washington, D.C. Uh, we have Shane McLeod. He's an activist, a political consultant, and a teacher. And we have our very own host, Lola Ellis, who um, hosts our show on occasion. And she's a 99 Rise a volunteer slash leader. And I'm so happy to have you both here. And I'm so excited. I want to hear about your personal experiences about Democracy Spring. And for those of you that don't know about it, um, now you're going to know about it. And hopefully you've heard something. But the mainstream media has pretty much blocked it all out. So we have people that are, are actually witnesses to this whole event. So. I'd like to start with Shane because Shane started on this march from Philadelphia. So, yeah, uh, um, started on Saturday, April second. Uh, about 100, about probably 200 people at the, the uh, in Philadelphia at Independence Hall at the park right out in front, uh, and that's where our country started. Right, that's where the Declaration of Independence was was written and signed, where the Constitution, e even the Articles of Confederation, were. Were, uh, were written there. So the symbolic meaning of, the, of starting there, where our country started, and ending the, after nine days, 144, or 140 miles, ending Washington, D.C., where our problem exists now, from the beginning to the end. It was a perfect theme organized by Democracy Spring, and it was, it, it was a fantastic st start from the, uh, uh, that actually, at, at the event, a lot of great speeches by re really good activists, and then we marched anywhere from 12 to 17 miles a day, and um, did chants, uh, talked to people along the way, gave out flyers, and it was really an incredible opportunity to meet other activists and feel the energy across the country. I think oh, over 35 states had representatives on that march and then finishing in D.C. and then it having eight days of protest. So that's kind of the big picture. And Lola and I both uh, participated in that, and uh, it was really a moving experience. And this is uh, something that kind of got came on the heels of the actual, we had a march for democracy in California, and 99 Rise pretty much came out of, I believe, the L Los Angeles area. Mm -hmm and um, grown over time and the march that they had um, back in, was it May or June of 2014? 2014. Yeah, that's how we all met right, right. here in Sacramento. Right, yeah. and so they went from Los Angeles to the Sacramento capital and... 37 days, uh, 480 and miles. miles and... And they occupied the yeah. capital yeah, for yeah. 12 days, I believe. Yeah, demanding certain uh, reform bills be passed and elevate the voice of the of the voters here in California and de-escalate the value of money in our in our system here in California so that was a perfect uh, practice run really mm -hmm. and it got uh, the organizers of 99 Rise I think gave them a lot of practical ex experience to put on a, uh, a countrywide you know, uh, uh, action which pulled people from all over the country 
and it, um, that's the, yeah, that's how we all met, and it was the same the same idea. Let's get people together uh, in Philadelphia, do the march, and then have seven or eight days of protests in the Capitol. Um, give people a chance to uh, uh, to meet their Congress members, to demand certain uh, changes, and to put this discussion on. Uh, on the agenda, I think, for America. And I think we did that. We had decent media coverage, wasn't as good as it could be. And then a couple of, of celebrities got arrested, and I think that helped bring some more media attention. Ben and Jerry, um, Rosario Dawes. Dawson. Dawson. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And um, anywhere, when, once we got to DC, it was anywhere between 450 people getting arrested the first day to. Um, 200, 100, I think was the minimum was 100 people, and and then the last three days, another organization called Democracy Awakening, which represents a number of organizations, uh, uh, they uh, they brought in thousands of people, and it was really powerful to see that many people coming together. Yeah, I, you know, I was just at home, getting all the feeds and getting all the pictures and everything, and it just, I was so amazed. It was just, you know, and I was just like. Darn, I wish I was there. You know, that, that's a reality for a lot of people, wishing they were there and not being able to be there. I know for me, you know, I have a full-time job, a 13-year-old, and uh, my own responsibilities. And I had to really, like, I get a lot of support to, you know, move that aside for me to be able to go for even the length of time that I went for. Like, I, I left on Tuesday, um, got there Tuesday night, and uh, went home the following Tuesday. So for me, that was a really big, you know, to, to do, and a lot of people couldn't do it. And so the people that were there, I feel like, really um, just had a lot of a, a lot of support. So more people could have been there had it been more accessible to them. And, but we did end up having, you know, people from every state in the country there, which was really exciting. We had the Capitol Police talking about how they, you know, had collected IDs because when people were arrested they would collect your IDs and then they would run everybody through the system making sure there wasn't any warrants out for anyone and if there wasn't you know you would just get what we did was a sight and release and that was my experience because I showed up like I said Wednesday was my first day there and um, but Shane being there before that you had a different experience on on Monday right Shane with yeah. 450 other people uh, I warned the police that Lola's coming to town so <laughs> <laughs> storms they coming they won't try that with yeah. they yeah. won't try this with me <laughs> no, what is this Shane oh this thing here <laughs> oh this is what uh, the 450 of us who got arrested on day 1 it was on on, on I can't remember the date, but it was Monday. It was there were eight days of protests. And yeah, I believe that was Monday the seventh, maybe tenth or eleventh. Oh my and God. We started <laughs> at Union Station, and Columbus Circle, and and probably about six or seven hundred people marched to the to the west side of the Capitol, and went up on the steps, the People's House. You know, that's, mm -hmm. that is the Capitol. That is the house that represents the interests of America. And, and every citizen and every voter, uh, even though the people inside may, may not uh, 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 abide by that, that thinking. And the police uh, arrested, uh, gave us several warnings. If you don't leave this, uh, this area, you will be arrested. So uh, some protesters, protesters backed away and the other protesters, uh, 450 of us, uh, decided, no, we're, we're to stay in and we're gonna risk arrest and we we did get arrested, and they hauled us away to a place about a, about a mile away, so kind of like a big garage. And <laughs> it wasn't uh, a jail. It wasn't anything where some people were fearing. It was really a, a holding facility where they processed us. But we had to wear these um, zip ties, and they're very difficult. They're, eventually, they were cut. That's why it's like this. But basically, our, our hands were put in here, not in the front, nice and comfortable, but back here, and then we had to sit down for three or four hours. So imagine That's sitting like this in a steel chair for four or five hours as they're processing. And I was worried so we had to go to the bathroom. That must yeah. have been a problem. Yeah, and there's a lot of elderly people who got mm -hmm. bruised. Um, but the police, I think, were very professional. That day, it was this kind of thing, moving us off. And then from day two to day eight, it was uh, moving us just about 100 yards away, um, just putting a little band on our on our hands and taking our ID and processing us, giving us a citation. 
So it, it, they were very professional and they were very respectful and a lot of the, uh, the activists ended up talking to the police and, and a couple of them admitted, you know, if they were off, they would be doing the same thing if they were in a different mm -hmm. position. So we felt they were behind us, they were doing their job, we were doing our job as activists and it was a really good experience. Well, what do you think was the most, the biggest message that was sent during that whole, the whole occupation? I I think the biggest message was that this issue, money and politics, is is the one that is uniting all the other issues that is that is involved in all the other issues. So every day we focused on a different topic. Like the first day was um, the all, well, actually the first day was kind of everyone all hands on deck. But the yeah. the first day that we actually had a had a a theme a theme yeah. was the elder the elderly, right? Mm -hmm. right? So all the issues with Social Security and, you know, trying to cut Medicare and all that, that is something that is, you know, is tied to money and politics. Mm -hmm. Then you had the next and day. Pharmaceutical drugs, I mean, it's everything. It's right. Then you had Racial healthcare. Justice Day, mm -hmm. we know immigration reform can't happen, you know, Black Lives Matter, the, mm -hmm. you know, the things that are, you know, keeping us safe, the, the way that our, you know, people of color are being mass incarcerated, mm -hmm. all of these things are tied to money and politics. Then yeah. we had um, Youth Day. Is that mm -hmm. the what, what was next? Student Student Youth Day. So you know the in, you know incredible student loan debt that we're right. having. You know all of this is tied to money and politics. And then uh, you know climate change. Mm -hmm. We had we had a day for for climate justice. And you know absolutely all of these things. The issue that we're we're elevating, or is that money and politics is keeping us from making progress on every single front, every single thing that we care about, that we want to see different in this world is being blocked by the influence of money and politics. And it's time that we all get together and recognize that we all have a fight in this and that we're all fighting, you know, for, you know, the concerns that we see in our lives, but we need to start listening to the concerns that everyone else is fighting for because money and politics is connected to all of them. And so that to me was the major major uh, goal of this campaign and also to show that people are willing to people across this country are ready to stand up and say enough is enough and we're willing to let the Capitol Police arrest us if that's what they want to do because no I did not want to get arrested but I was there to exercise my First Amendment right and if that's what they wanted to do, if that's what they were going to do, I couldn't do anything about it. But I was there to send a message, not only to people in Congress that are not listening to the people, but to everyone at home that couldn't be there, that I'm with them and that I'm willing to be there and that, you know, we can get there all together and we're going to send this message. And people are bringing it back from D.C. to their respective homes and they're going to start standing up here. We're yeah. going to be doing it in Sacramento. Yeah. All across the country, everybody that was involved, I'm sure, is ready to go home and not Absolutely. let this message get lost. It's not going away. Yeah, and it's perfect timing with the election this year, with all the problems in the election system, with so much money being spent and all the candidates, uh, minus one. <laughs> right. <laughs> At least from super PAC money, you know, yeah. funding all these elections. And uh, that's the concept, I think, behind Democracy Spring. We need to spring up. We need to stop being... Uh, complacent and accepting of the conditions of uh, the huge influence of money in our political system and the corruption going on, that we need to stand up and and do and, and protest in a number of ways. You know, ours was nonviolent civil disobedience, and that's certainly one way. That goes back to Martin Luther King using that, Cesar Chavez, Gandhi with assault walks in the 1930s. So there's there's a history of of the of of the success of this kind of protest, and we use that for for the 17 days, nine days of walking and eight days of protesting and bringing thousands of people together. It was the most amount of rest ever in D.C. Nice, uh, yeah. for protests. It was, it was very powerful. So this, it, the, the, the timing was perfect. Yeah. I think it's a, a, it's a perfect storm for political reform. And it really this year with what Trump, even Trump and his, some of his supporters believe that the system is corrupt. So it's right. great, and, and he's attracting a very similar kind of uh, uh, person who's saying the system is corrupt, the established parties are corrupt, and Bernie is saying that on, on the other side, right. and they and they are they are the they're the ones who have uh, the most amount of excitement in getting people to vote who haven't voted, voted in a long time. So this was a an, an outstanding, well organized and uh, event and ac action, and there's going to be I think many more. Uh, 
state capitals and cities where people are going to do demonstrations and push their state legislators, their city council members, their boards of supervisors, boards of education, anywhere there where there's a politician who's able to be corrupted by special interest groups and money, I, I think they need to, they need to be pushed and, and told, you have to represent us, not right. your donors. We have to remind them who they represent. Yeah. Yeah, and we need to be doing this at the city level, at the state level, and the federal level, like every level. We can't just sit back and, and say, oh, well, that's too big for me or that's too small for me. It's like we all need to you know, get knowledgeable, and we need to make it easier to become knowledgeable. Everybody knows that they have busy lives and it's hard to keep up with everything, but if you build a network of people that you trust and that can you know, make things easier for each other and, you know, Bottom line, we have to demand it too. We have to yeah. demand that it's easier for us. And we us. have, you know, the problem is the media blackout of all these actions that are going on, especially with Democracy Spring and at, after Democracy Awakening. You heard very, very little about it on mainstream right. media. There, there was an awesome thing though that the Young Turks, a lot of people are getting their news from alternative sources, and the right. Young Turks is a TV show that is, you know, falls under that category of alternative media. And I was so happy to see that they were there every single day live streaming. Yeah, the I was whole watching thing. some of it. So too, there's a lot yeah. of video footage that they compiled and that they have been sharing mm -hmm. and um, that you know is accessible and out it'll there. It'll be for on people. YouTube. People can go on YouTube yeah. and find yes. a lot of this. And all the organizations that were involved, you know, with from ninety nine Rise and well, over a hundred organizations that were part of Democracy Spring. They're going to carry that to their members and, and be more active and work, I think, in a, in a stronger coalition. And then the group Democracy Awakening, which did the final three days, and everything was kind of merged together. It's two different groups, two different coalitions, and kind of at the bookends of eight days of protesting. And uh, Democracy Awakening had Common Cause, uh, Greenpeace, uh, Greenpeace, NAACP, yep, Public Citizen. Public Citizen, right? Represent Us was mm -hmm. part of both or, uh, coalitions. And now all those groups are going to continue. And those groups don't typically do this kind of action. You know, they mm -hmm. don't ask their members to risk arrest. Mm -hmm. Usually it's call your legislature, your Congress mem member, uh, write them, email them, uh, visit them. And th all those things are good, and people should continue doing those. But uh, doing uh, nonviolent civil disobedience where you're really you're putting pressure and you're demanding certain things, uh, get passed, I think that is a, a level of a action, a, lo a type of activity that needs to happen. And we're really trying to make them pay attention, and sometimes that's the only way you can do it, is yeah. just get in their face. And we had uh, <laughs> representatives there, um, you know, the representative of the Common Cause got arrested, the representative Represent Us uh, got arrested, uh, NAACP, Greenpeace, uh, Larry Lessig. Lawrence Lessig, mm -hmm. the yeah. author of Republic Lost. You're on first name term Larry yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> you, Shane marched with Lawrence Lessig yeah. and it was great. he got arrested with Lawrence Lessig and all that. Yeah. 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 I'm still and disappointed he never got to do the debate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. He, he's going to bring that home. I mean, there's a, a, a number of uh, reform candidates like Zephyr Teachout that mm -hmm. is running and so this, this uh, had a, a, a broad reach, and I think it's going to have an impact uh, uh, th through certain candidates that are pushing this kind of reform, and all the groups they're associated with are going to take it back, or, you know, figure out what the next uh, major event could be, and lots of minor events. You know, this isn't doing this just once, say once a year just in D.C. isn't going to pull enough. It's got to no, be spread out. The and tide I think that's, is turning. Right, and mm -hmm. I think that's the organizers know mm -hmm. that. This, let's let's bring this start it in DC and spread it out. Spring it out to all the different cities and counties, and I think that's what's going to happen. And so, do, I know that we do have something coming up in May at the Capitol. Are you guys aware of this? For uh, 99 Rise, and they're carrying the Democracy Spring theme here at home. I don't have the actual dates, but there will be some things going on. Um, and the website, where and people we can, can find check out, out 99 one. Rise Sacramento. Definitely, we do have it posted there. So if you're interested in in standing up locally, mm -hmm. um, we things are in the works right now. Yeah, and people should contact their state legislators, uh, le legislators 
there's a number of bills that are being uh, considered. Wednesday morning, there's going to be a hearing for, to put Prop 49 back on. Right, right. And that's a hearing at 9 o'clock by, by the Senate committee. People should come. If they can't come, at least contact their legislator, their state senator, and their state assembly member. We'll tell them to support it. Yeah, support that bill. There's a number of others. Uh, the Disclose Act is back up again. There's uh, another bill by uh, Bob Hertzberg, Senator Bob Hertzberg, to improve Cal Access, to improve disclosure. You know, um, there's there's lots of bills, so people need to get involved in all the different groups, especially 99 Rise, and find out how they can. Uh, how they personally can get involved and push their legislator to do the right thing. And I mean, I think it comes down to, too, is we all want to have Citizens United overturned. We yeah. Do this, right. this is huge. And I, I think with the, the support that we're going to get and that, you know, is growing, it's a reality. Yeah. You know? And there may just be an implosion uh, with the parties this year. I mean, think about the <laughs> Republican convention. You know, Donald Trump's probably going to walk in there with... 10 or 20 delegates short, mm -hmm. but he's the leader, and he's in a, he's, his position is, I may not have 1237, but I'm close. They're not, the insiders are not going to give him the nomination, so right. there'll be an implosion in that party, and a lot of disgruntled Republicans and independents who may have wanted to vote for one of their candidates are going to feel like the system was rigged, and certainly on the Democrat and the progressive side, there's been a lot of voter obstruction, uh, oppression going on. Arizona long lines, mm -hmm. New York, a third of the New York voters couldn't vote, 44% of New Jersey voters can't vote unless you declare Democrat or Republican. Uh, for the, the, new, the New York race. The electronic voting is rigged. Yeah. Our votes, our, our election is coming up, so everyone should go out and check and make sure that they're registered correctly. Right, mm -hmm. and the date for that again is, I think it's mid-May that you need to make sure to you May are... I think it's May 28th, I believe. I, I think could it's be the, wrong, I think it's early May, and yeah. that's pretty simple to change your registration so you can you can vote. But if you're in New York, you had to do that by mid-October. You know, who does that? Mm -mm. If you right. want to register for the first time in, in, in uh, New York, you had a month to do it before the election. And but if you wanted we, to change your party, it had to be all the way to October. Why don't we have one system for everybody? You know, it, the party insiders do not want that. It, they want to make a so complicated. Convoluted. They want to control it. We want to say that you know the states have their you know their, rights. their autonomy. And <laughs> yeah. it's not really the states; it's the party leaders yeah. who right. want to make sure. And the, the delegates, uh, like Pennsylvania, is uh, voting tomorrow, and the majority right. of those delegates, you're 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 voting for the president, but you're also voting for delegates. And if you're a Dem, you can identify who they are pledging ag right. agreeing to. But, uh, but if you're a Republican, you don't know who they're going to vote for. Why do we even have middlemen? I Why know. do we have delegates and superdelegates? Why do we have the Electoral College? I These know. are unnecessary middlemen. They are switchboard operators. We do not need them. No, we don't. We don't. And yeah, so that's, I mean, we've got we've to scrap all these institutions that we have. Yeah. It's, and it all starts with money working, and politics. And yeah, it's that not is working. No. And get the corruption out. Right. Yeah, and I, I just wanted to say, since we were talking about Democracy Spring, and I keep staring at these, um, you know, some people get, uh, you know, scared and nervous when people talk about getting arrested mm -hmm. and like, oh, you're a criminal or you're going to have that on your record or what's, you know, they think about what are all the consequences. And I just wanted to call out that, you know, everybody was very well trained on the, you know, the act of nonviolent civil disobedience. There were multiple trainings every day, two trainings a day where people just, you know, knew how we were going to, you know, carry out the action and how we were just going to march up to the steps and sit down and, you know, stay there and then, you know, go through the process. So what we did was really, we got cited and released. Mm -hmm. So really what we got was you either come back to court for a court date, which in most cases of nonviolent civil disobedience, when someone is protesting and using their First Amendment right, the court, the judge does not take up the case. The DA does not take up the case. So you get so the cases just get dropped. Um, and, and the other, or your other option was to pay a $50 fine. So if I didn't want to go back to court, which I did not, I paid $50. I was arrested two times and I paid $100 and that's a small price to pay to be there to send that message that you know we're ready to stand up and, and fight back. Right, and as far as the arrest, it's an arrest. It's not something that a job application is asking nope. for. It's not a conviction, it's an arrest. And I, I wouldn't want to work for a company that would say, I'm sorry, we can't hire you 
because you exactly. were protesting at the Capitol to <laughs> right. get big money out of politics and to change a corrupt system. Yeah, it's going to be hard to find some people that would hold that against you, yeah. I think. Yeah. But in so, closing, I'm, I, I just, how was this experience for you personally? It was transformative for me, just meeting all these different activists, 15-year-olds, 81-year-olds that were in the March on Washington in 63 and the Chicago Convention in 68. I mean, all these different activists of all different ages, several diff different parties. People, there were Hillary supporters, there were some Republicans. So it was a big group of people, and it, it's so good, almost like a support group, to be surrounded by people who are passionate like you and to know that that energy is, is going to continue forward. It was, it was just... For me, it was really emotional and amazing. I just, I just remember that it was a group of 12 people that started this idea, and from there, they just, you know, worked and worked and organized and, you know, to get other organizations involved, to get other people to buy into that vision and to be able to do this. So really, it it doesn't take, you know, millions of people to start something like this, and so. This is the start, and so from here, you know, we're, we're only going to bring forward. Yeah. And I just want to say, you're both, both of you, I'm so inspired that you guys who really took the time to be there, you know. I mean, just being there was, was huge to me. I was just in awe, and I was so happy. It just really warmed my heart. It was like, we've, we're doing it. We're doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, I was there in spirit. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it was so good to just see and see you guys, um, you know, your, your pictures, mm -hmm. you know, and I posted everything I could get my hands Great. on. Thank so you. it's on 99 Rise Sacramento on our Facebook page. So please check it out. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank you both for being here. And you know what? It's just the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy. Yeah. It went by so fast. <laughs> I'm sitting here shaking. I think I have like this chill going on in my body. to be any sense or order.